Um, um, <clears throat> are we ready? Okay. I think so. Awesome. All right. Uh, welcome to our final week of uh, Teach to Reach campaign. Uh, the webinar today will be presented by myself, my Geta. Um, I think we will be talking about uh, creating assessments today. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So just some housekeeping rules. Uh, we have this uh, meeting for 45 minutes and then please switch off the mic and video when you are joining the meeting and then your participation. Sorry, no, and yes, Mbali. It's checking reports. <laughs> just to remind it, you not creating oh, yes. assessments. Yes, uh, checking reports. Sorry about that, Mbali. Um, and then we will be talking about checking reports today. And then the duration of the meeting will be 45 minutes. And then please switch off your mic and video when you are joining the meeting. And then your participation and engagement will be highly appreciated. Uh, please raise your hand and wait until we recognize your hand if you would like to speak. And then at the end of the uh, meeting, we'll have a question and answer time for you. All right, so uh, just like as we know, uh, Siavula is zero rated for MTN, Vodacom, and Telcom Mobile. All you have to do is just type this address in full on the URL code, whether on Google, Chrome, or on um, your Safari, or any other search engine that you have. Siavula is zero rated there um, on, uh, on these three networks. Um, you can access Siavula on the website with any of these devices, which can be your laptop, your smartphone, your tablet, or even a desktop. Anything that can uh, connect to the internet, you can uh, access Yavula on those three devices there. And then um, with the themes that we have had, uh, on the first week we had uh, a presentation by Mbali about the Siavula's new navigation and learner registration. And then second week we had uh, the presentation by myself where we spoke about revision and lesson. And then theme number three was all about learner practice for consolidation that was presented by Lungelo. And then last week uh, we had theme four where Mbali spoke about creating assessment. And then today we are talking about taking reports. And then I'll be the presenter for today. All right. So um, moving on, um, Bali, are we OK? Should I start? Now that we have the rules and everything out. Yeah, we are good to go. Awesome. Thank you for that, Bali. Um, OK, so I am going to switch off the video here so that I do not uh, disturb you when I'm doing the presentation. Uh, if that is OK. All right, so uh, theme five is all about checking reports. On Siavula, you know, uh, on this new navigation we have where it says check work. This is where we find our different reports, and this theme will show you how to view different reports that provide you with data and insights into your learner's performance. Uh, it will also highlight the significance of viewing learner reports once assessments have been completed. All right, and then, now we are saying that you should view the Siavula reports because they show you how learners are doing in the particular topics that you are teaching them. And then they also show you some problematic areas. Uh, and then you as a teacher, you can target those areas based on the reports and the performance of the learners and then try and do some diagnostic evaluation and then also try and give them some remedial activities that will help learners to do better in those particular topics. And then also um, you will be able to find out what exactly exactly need more revision for you uh, so that your learners are supported totally and they will be able to do well in mathematics and physical sciences. So we are focusing on this part of the reports on this teaching cycle because we have already spoken about doing revision. We have already given you some tips on how you can present your lesson on this teaching uh, teacher cycle. And then we also showed you how learners can go and practice for consolidation and Mbali also spoke about uh, setting assessments uh, or creating assignments last week. So now we need to focus on the uh, viewing and checking the report. Okay, uh, continuing, 
uh, we have these types of Siavula reports, which are the topic performance report. Uh, just like the topic says, uh, uh, we are going to be looking at the report per topic that you are teaching. We will explain that better uh, during this presentation. And then we also have learner performance report. We have assignment performance report, and we also have leaderboards. All right. The first one is the topic performance report. So the topic performance report was formerly known as the question report. It is where uh, teachers can track their learners progress by question. So remember in week two, that's where we spoke about a uh, learner performance report. Um, uh, uh, please excuse me um, for a moment. Um, so we spoke about learner performance uh, report in uh, we spoke about topic performance uh, report we will speak about topic performance report today uh, because we have given uh, learners some siavula question ids i'm sorry i got uh, distracted there a bit um, um yes uh, but uh, let's move on to the live navigation of this learner performance report. All right. So if we we do log on to our Siavula account here, how do we find the learner performance report? So if we are on our welcome page here, uh, I will use our Siavula demo class here. So the quicker way for you as a teacher, if you are on the premium plus uh, you will go down here and just click on the topic performance uh, report for your class and then if you are viewing from the grade point of view you will also go scroll down and then click on the topic performance uh, report so it depends whether you are viewing from the grade point of view or you are viewing from the class point of view here so if you click on the Topic performance report. Remember, previously we would have selected some questions, uh, specific Siavula question, and given the learners question IDs that we wanted them, we would have wanted them to uh, do in class as a class work or as a homework. So the first thing that we would do, we would click on the topic performance uh, report there, and then. If you are looking for a specific topic uh, that you have given question IDs to, you can just click on change here and then you know you can work around with uh, the date uh, or the range of uh, how uh, how long that uh, work was supposed to be done here. So you can make your own selection. Uh, we can just say uh, from this date to the other date. And then from there, you will come and make your own selection here and type in the Siavula question IDs that you have uh, uh, given to the learners as a homework. So if you have maybe given them some topics under factorization, what you can do, you can select or type in uh, the Siavula question IDs and when it appears, you just simply select that question. So you can even select as many questions as you would have given to your learners in class. And then after that, you can um, work around here and then restrict your report depending on how you want it to be seen. And then from there, you will be able to create that report on the specific Siavula question IDs that you would have given to your learners. Uh, <clears throat> And then if you scroll down here, you will see the number of uh, the average completion of those questions uh, that you would have completed. And then uh, they fall under that algebraic expression here, as you can see. And then as you scroll uh, towards the, the, the left, the right hand side, you will even see the level of difficulty for that question that you would have selected. And then how learners are doing and what the average uh, results per that question that you would have selected. And then as you uh, this this uh, uh, site here is actually very important because that's where you can just click on that question to see the actual question uh, that is generative, but uh, the actual how the question that uh, was given to the learners look like. So if you do click on that one, it will open that question so that you can have a feel of how the question uh, would have looked like. All right, and then if you scroll down, you will see results per learner by learner. 
So it will give you all the learners' names and how much they have done in those particular questions that you have selected for them and what the average completion. So you know uh, how much they have done in those questions and then how much they bought uh, on those questions. And then if you go down also, you can even see the number of attempts that learners would have done on that topic. So here, uh, it gives you the percentage of how much they got in that question and then how many attempts in brackets here, it will be how many attempts they would have uh, taken in order the, for them to complete those questions that you would have selected. And then if you scroll all the way, um, uh, uh, okay, if we have selected many questions, they will all appear. You can just scroll to towards the left there. All right, and then... Uh, I think uh, I hear I voice them, Bali. Um, sorry, Alex. I think just joined, and he will will ask Alex to to mute. It was yeah. reflecting from there. Okay. All right, and then moving on. Let's say now you are looking for the uh, the actual performance report by the learner because this one gives you an overall uh, topic performance by all the learners in your class. So if you are looking for the report for Fatima here, what you can do, you just click on Fatima's name here, and then it will open the individual report for this learner on this particular topic that uh, you have selected questions for. And then it will show you that uh, how, how how much uh, the learner has uh, gotten in that uh, question, and then how many attempts they would have done in that particular question. It also shows you those questions here again. And then you can even click on the hit map here to see where the learner is is uh, struggling and where the learner is doing well. So the the heat map actually determines, it gives you a clearer uh, picture of where the learners are working hard and where they are not working hard. So if it's deep blue, then it means learners have been working on that particular uh, topic or on those questions. And then if it's just towards the this red uh, color, it means that learners are not working on that section there. All right, so that's how you can also interpret. And then up here, there is where you can download the Excel sheet for this report uh, for Fatima here alone. And then if we go back also, um, you will also be able to see that you can actually download this topic performance report for the overall learners or the overall class there. All right. Um, I will move on if we don't have questions on the topic performance report. So, like I said, if you have been sharing the Siavula question IDs, then uh, topic performance report should be your best friend. Uh, so, yes, uh, we are going to move on from uh, the topic performance report. I'll just go back to my presentation here again. All right. Can I get that? Yes, Bali. Yes, I just wanted maybe to add something about the topic performance report. Yes, um, I just wanted to um, remind everyone that um, the, the questions that you select would be restricted to the grade of that class. So yes, the questions um, are much like the summary report previously, you could only view performance on the grade of the actual class and not on a different grade. Yes. So um, thank you for that, Mbali. So because this is a grade 10 class, so what Mbali is saying, if you come to change here, um, if you come to change here and you are doing your own selection of the questions, all the questions that are going to be selectable here will be coming from only the grade 10 uh, content and they won't be able to uh, uh, come from the, the other grade, which is grade nine or even grade 11 or grade eight. So the report uh, is restricted to the grade 10 content if you would have selected questions there. All right, thanks for that, Mbali. Okay, so moving on to the learner performance report. Uh, learner performance report gives uh, teachers an easy 
to view yet detailed picture of how Atlas is using Fiavula. So uh, the learner performance report was formerly known as the, sum uh, the summary uh, report on Fiavula. And then uh, this is where learner practice will be shown for the year to date and average mastery across all chapters in the curriculum will also be shown. Um, so Remember in week three, Lungelo did presentation about practice and consolidation. So if learners are going to be practicing uh, on Siavula, just going around um, uh, uh, around Siavula uh, on practice here, uh, if learners just go here and uh, practice any uh, any subject, any topic here, uh, they will be able to, uh, you will be able to uh, see uh, read uh, from the uh, learner performance report how, what they are doing. So how do we find this learner performance report? So we can also go to our check work here and then from there we'll come here and then we'll just say for mathematics and then we will get our learner performance report. And then the learner performance report uh, will actually show you everything that learners would have been doing on Siavula. Um, as you can see here, it gives you the class summary. Um, let me just quickly come to our demo class here so that you can have a clearer picture of how the learner performance report look like. All right, so <clears throat> if we are here, it gives you a summary. It, uh, that's information we know, uh, and then from there it will give you the names of the learners and the mastery that they have accumulated based on the practice questions that they have done. And then also it will show you how many sections does they have accumulated. And it also gives you a date of when last they were on Siavula and when last they did uh, attempt some questions on Siavula. And then that's that last summary with the mastery. And then another thing that you can do if you want maybe uh, uh, rank your learners according to their mastery. You can just click here on the average mastery. And then if you click here again, it will show you who is the most active learner and how many exercises they would have um, completed and how many stars they would have accumulated there, as you can see. And then uh, just here, I'll go down. It also gives you the practice uh, summary per chapter, uh, showing you which sections your learners from your class would have been completing. And then uh, if you click on that topic there, it shows you some of the uh, topics that they would have uh, completed under algebraic expressions here, and then products, as you can see, and then how uh, learners are doing in those particular topics there. So that's the the summary per chapter and per uh, section there. And then here, it actually would also show you when were the learners busy on this section here. Remember, we teach uh, topics in different uh, times, I think in different provinces. So most likely if you're in Cape Town and they are doing uh, trigonometry around uh, November, then that's when most of the learners will be working on that topic uh, uh, around November. And then also uh, scrolling down, if you are looking for now mastery per chapter, how are my learners doing per each and every chapter? So, for example, here it's for over, overall uh, 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 last year. As you can see, you will see that uh, Fatima here was doing uh, was not doing so well in algebraic expressions, but uh, she did do well in exponents, and then um, she didn't do so well in equations and inequalities. And then you see there is also a link to these topics. And then you can also ask yourself, why is this learner not doing well in this particular topic? How should I help them in this particular topic so that they can do much, much, much better in this topic? And if they are failing that section, then it would be nice for you to just come and look at their mastery per that chapter and then be able to um, give them some Siavula question IDs or send an assignment around that topic or any way that you can help them to do better in that topic that you see that they are doing well. So it does give you an overall uh, feel of how learners are doing in uh, that specific topic here, as you can see. And then also if you go to practice questions completed by chapter. So this one also gives you a clear picture of how many questions did this learner 
do under algebraic expression. Sometimes you find out that uh, this learner did 183 questions here, but the, 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 the mastery per chapter is still low. What would be the problem? Remember, here you can just uh, uh, deduct that, uh, deduce that this learner was probably struggling with algebraic expression. Hence, they have done so many questions, but they haven't really accumulated a bigger mastery on that. And then you can see which questions they are struggling with. And then this here side shows you where and how many questions the learners have done in that particular uh, 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 chapter. <clears throat> and then also, if you scroll, uh, if you uh, perhaps are looking for the individual report of the learner uh, with all this information, remember, you can just simply click on the learner name here. And then as you can see here, if you click on the learner name, it will open the individual report for September. And then you can just scroll down and see how they are doing in this particular topic. And then remember, you can download this one. And you can also adjust the dates for this assignment here, uh, for this report here, not assignment. Uh, we love assignments as teachers, so I saw about that. So um, you can just adjust the dates, whether you're looking for year to date, or you can make your own selection on how they are doing. And then also you can download the full report here, and then you can file it for in your Excel format, um, uh, depending on what you want to do with that report. All right, so are we happy with the learner performance report uh, that gives you a summary of everything that uh, your learners would have done on Siavula? Are we good to go? All right. <laughs> okay. Um, um, it um, seems good, uh, my guess. There's all right. uh, no question from teachers, but can I just um, add one thing there? So if you can, I don't know if you've closed your page for the learner performance. Okay. No. If you go to this part, my gets away, there is mastery per chapter. Yes. Um, I wanted to just make an example for some of the teachers who are working on giving the learners the code for uh, the sections. So if you've been working through a particular um, sections within ex the, the chapter exponents, for instance, and your, you said your learners must go and practice that they are achieving mastery. And so that will be indicated here. Um, you can then look and compare. If you click on the, uh, on the chapter name, you can then also see if you click them on exponents, my getter, or any one, it, really, you can do okay. that. Yeah, then now it is showing which of the learners are performing low. Um, and then you can know how to assist those learners. But then you can also click again, my gets on, on that exponent. You alternate, then now you are seeing the learners who have been achieving higher mastery um, on that particular section. So this can really be helpful for engaging with your learners about how they are performing on, on their mastery day. Um, yeah, thanks. I wanted to just show that teachers can hover on, on yeah. that to look at who is at the mm. top, who's at the bottom. Yes, thank you for that, Sis Um, Yes. All right, <clears throat> moving on. Uh, so now our favorite uh, assignment performance report. Um, I know with Siavula, one of our unique features that we have is the assign the ability to send assignment to our learners to go to the Siavula question bank, select questions, and then send them as an assignment to the learners. And then we know that assignment setting can be used interchangeably um, as a classwork, as a homework, as a test, as an assignment also. Uh, so uh, that's our uh, one of our unique features there on Siavula. And then uh, the assignment performance report gives detailed results for an assignment sent to your learners. So we know last week Mbali spoke about creating assessments. So today let's uh, dive more into how we can interpret these assignments that were sent. So again, uh, what we do, we can just come to um, the quicker way using our uh, navigation. We come to check work and then we go to the grade and then we just look into the assignment 
uh, here we can just click on the assignment uh, performance uh, report here and then as you can see you will be able to uh, get the assignment that was sent and then you can be able to uh, view that assignment from that side all right so what i'm gonna do now i'm just going to quickly uh, go again back to our uh, our demo last year and then show you another way of viewing the assignment will be coming straight to weight written assessments here uh, assignments here on your class or on the a great way to get an assignment here. That's another quick way you can just view the assignment report. So what I'll go and do now is click on the assignments here, and then let's analyze how the assignment report looks like. So uh, what we will do now, we'll just open the assignment because the list of all your assignments will be down here. And then from there, you can just uh, I will open the assignment that you are looking for. So there you can, um, I think, the other change uh, challenge that or the 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 questions that we always get is um, can learners uh, complete the assignment even if it has uh, uh, expired or the due date has passed? So we always encourage that learners will always have that access to that assignment on their learner profile. Um, and then you as a teacher, what you can do, you can just click here after opening that particular assignment report, you click on change here, and then on change here, you can say, I want uh, average of all the questions, I want the, the average of all the attempts or the first attempt, the best attempt or the last attempt, depending on what you are looking for. And then with that issue of due date that can be changed uh, just yet on Siavula assignment right now. So what you can do as a teacher, you can say, let's keep all attempts before and after due date. And then from there, you'll be able to create a report. So by just doing that, you'll be surpassing the due date that learners uh, would have completed the assignment um, maybe after the, the due date. So that's another thing. So as you know, it will give you the average completion of the assignment in class and then uh, the, also the average results on how your learners are doing in that. It also shows you how many questions you have selected and what was the difficulty level, which is now it is a, in average medium questions here. Gives you the start date and also it gives you the due date for that assignment. And then to analyze the assignment also, you'll have your learners' names and then how much they would have done in that uh, assignment, how much they would have received uh, from completing the assignment. So 100 means that they have done uh, all the questions that you have selected. And then 73% here just means that the learner uh, is not yet done with the assignment. What entails this 73% will be, you can just click on uh, uh, the here profile, and then you will be able to see what exactly the learner hasn't completed. As you can see, they will uh, they have not completed um, question number nine, ten, and eleven. So that's where you will tell them to go and um, uh, and complete those questions. And then by just looking at this question here, uh, at this report here, why? We think that uh, Becky Temba did not complete this assignment. So it's uh, actually, as you can see here, the learner would have done so well in the assignments and they were uh, receiving this question. But as you look into this question here, the learner attempted it twice and then uh, got it right. Uh, maybe the, the second time since well, they got 50%. Maybe this is what was uh, maybe discouraging for them to complete because they did somehow get this question wrong somewhere there. And then they repeated it and then they were like, no, I'll finish off uh, the work later on. And then if you want to see also the question that the learner was struggling with, uh, which is this question number eight here, you can just simply open that question and then see the question that the learner would have struggled with and then try and explain to them and then uh, just try to uh, make sure that they do go and complete because we are always concerned with making sure that learners are using Siavula effectively and they are learning from the, the platform also. And then if we go back also, <clears throat> 
on this overall assignment report here. Uh, you will see also uh, there are those learners who would have uh, not completed the assignment, right? So you can just click on the completion here to see the ascending order according to the completion of the assignment. And then you can just tell these two learners, Peki Temba and Gyalebukha, to go and complete the assignment. And as you can see, uh, Gyalebukha would have done 55% of the, of the assignment, but they got 5%. So you can just tell by analyzing this report that this learner was really, really struggling with these questions. So uh, what you do, you can even open the individual report of Gyalebukha by just clicking on that. And then from there, you will analyze uh, and see that, hey, Kele Bukha did question one, question two, and then question three. This one shows the attempts to these questions. And then you see they were not doing so well. And then maybe this is one of the learners that you can uh, scaffold nicely, call them aside, give them some extra lessons, and then explain this concept with them. So that's how you can also analyze this assignment performance report and then results by question uh, this is actually my favorite because it also uh, shows you how your le overall learners are doing in that particular question so as you can see here it shows you that this was a hard question and 100 percent of your learners had done this question but 42% average, uh, which is what they are getting. So learners are struggling with this this question here, question number one. So you as a teacher, you can just open the question and then see why were learners actually struggling with this question and try and explain it to them uh, and give them some skills on how to answer this question. And then you see that uh, the question that they were actually doing much better in it, it was question number seven, since well, we have 82% average, uh, uh, average on that question and the attempts uh, of the learners. So that's how you interpret the overall report with your learners. And then if you come down here, uh, this is actually also one of my favorite uh, to look at. If we click on the heat map here, so the heat map will give you that color spectrum here, showing you uh, the green, which is, oh, they are doing well. Okay. And then if you go horizontally, then it's per learner. So as you can see, Fatima had done well from question one until question number seven, but uh, Fatima stopped from question eight and then they didn't do so well in that. But they had attempted these questions here and then they got it. Uh, they got the questions wrong, as you can see. The number in the bracket shows that I have attempted the question and then I got zero results in that question. And then also, uh, looking into this report here, if I go uh, vertically, vertically now is per question across all my learners. How are my learners doing in that particular question? So I will just go vertically. And then if I see most green uh, green on this uh, vertical point of, uh, of view, then it means they are doing much better in question two here, as you can see. But then if I look into question number, um, question number 11, just going across vertically here, I see it has just too much a uh, reddish color there. So that means this is a question that I, as a teacher, I would just uh, maybe uh, have some time and then uh, analyze this question and explain it to the learners. So is question eight. I would know that this is one of the problematic questions. And how do I see the actual question? Remember, I'll just scroll up here and then click on the link to the question eight and the question 11 and then uh, uh, explain it to my learners. So that's how you can analyze the the, the Siavula assignment report. And then also it's downloadable as always uh, in Excel form sheet. You can just uh, uh, download that uh, uh, assignment here. And then also uh, if you are looking for the report per individual learner, what do you do? You can just click on the learner's name here and simply download that uh, individual learner report. And then it is here, and then you can just do your analysis of that uh, uh, assignment here. All right, um, are we happy with the assignment reports? I think I will uh, try and move a bit faster if we don't have questions. Uh, just yet. Are we good to go? 
All right. Um, there is no hand. Uh, okay. Like okay. All right. Thank you for that. Um. So now we move on to our Siavula leaderboards. So uh, Siavula leaderboards show learners where they rank relatively to other learners in their classes or in their schools or in the whole country. So uh, using leaderboard is a great way to create excitement and positive competition amongst your learners. Um, and then we have uh, public leaderboards and the three types of public leaderboards that we have are learner leaderboard, grade leaderboards and schools leaderboards. So the most important thing about leaderboards is you have to opt in. You as a teacher, you have to opt in your school and then uh, opt in your classes. If you feel like, hey, let me uh, opt in my 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 grade there, uh, you can just opt it in and then compete with the uh, thousands and thousands of grades and thousands and thousands of schools on Siavula that are completing and thousands of learners. They also have to opt in because uh, consent is very important. And then another thing that we can do is create our own leaderboards at our school. So let me show you uh, this leaderboards that I'm talking about. OK, all right, so moving on. On here, our um, navigation here, <laughs> uh, uh, the way I'm so used to just uh, getting things from the navigation here. Uh, yes, so if we click on the leaderboards, so these are our public leaderboards here. So we have, I will start with the school leaderboards here. So if we click on the school leaderboards, remember you would have opted in your schools here. That's where you will be able to see in this month here, how many um, uh, uh, schools here, the top 20 schools that we have are here. Um, so you can see your school here. Uh, uh, there are uh, some familiar schools here. So um, uh, what you can do, you can see uh, the teacher who opted in their school and then the number of atoms that learners would have accumulated in this month May alone. And then uh, it also shows you the number of exercises that learners would have completed. I know you are asking yourself, why are these learners here um, why do they have most exercises completed, but their outcomes are lower than this other school here? So sometimes is each and every question has different number of atoms. So if learners are focusing on the medium hard questions, obviously they are going to get more atoms because the level of difficulty of the question determines the number of atoms that accompany that question. So uh, that's why a uh, basic question will have like about five atoms, but sometimes a hard question can have up to 200 questions. So that's how we do uh, 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 know uh, how they got the, the 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 atoms there, and then we also have some uh, schools here who are competing for maths. And remember, we are going to have our one million maths competition uh, later on in September. So this is where now you are already seeing your schools and how they are doing throughout um, the course of the year. And then that's our first um, uh, public leaderboard. And then moving on, now we have our great leaderboard. So. <clears throat> It's also a public leaderboard. And then this is where now you as your teacher, you can opt in your grade. Like uh, they have opted in here, the the, the grade eight uh, for you, Mem uh, Zimboza. I'm glad you are here. I see your grade eight learners are doing quite well on the Avula, uh, on the grade leaderboard there, which is good. So it means you have to, you have opted in your grade here and you trust your kids. Uh, so uh, it will show you according to the grade how they are doing uh, in that particular uh, subject and your school there. And then the third public leaderboard that we have is the learner leader, learners leaderboards here. So this is where now we have those bullets from our schools uh, who don't need us to teach them. Uh, we just say go and work on the Avula and they do so well. Um, I see uh, Mr. Tutuzi, uh, one of your learners from Northern Academy. Oh, okay. 
I think they are dominating uh, this uh, group here, the Northern Academy learners. Um, so um, I see that's how you would see how learners are doing uh, individually, those who have opted in in the learner leaderboards here. So yeah, it shows you that these kids have already completed their curriculum and it's just the 31st of May. What what are you now going to teach them if they are like this? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, that's uh, one of the public leaderboards and they are divided into platinum, which is those with the mastery level from 75 to 100%. And then we have gold, uh, which is from uh, 60, which is from 50 to uh, 75. And then uh, and then we have silver, which is from uh, 25 to 50. And then we have bronze leak, which is uh, from zero to 25. So it's divided into four uh, categories there or uh, four uh, 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 leaks there. And then, yes, that's our public leaderboard. And then another, another way uh, we can now create our own leaderboard. All right. So, uh, Sorry, my just, kids, um, yes, it's not for um, can I just add one thing that normally confuses teachers and learners yes. when they look at the learner leaderboards? Yes. Um, the part about the questions, uh, the number of questions completed and why the learners are in. So I think that great example, just scroll just there on the gold. The gold will have a better example, grade eight gold. Okay. 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 So you can see here, there is the learners number one and two um, on position one and two, they both have 72%. Um, but the number two, it shows very little questions that they have done, even compared to number four and understanding that. So the mastery is considering all the mastery for the whole content for the whole year that the learner has done, but the questions and atoms are only considered for only this month. So that means um, the learner who is on position number two have mm -hmm. practiced pre in the previous months to accumulate that 72 percent. Um, but then they've worked um, just this month and did about 79 questions, which make them to still be there on the on on um, and, and be number two. If there is a learner let's assume there was a learner who also has a 72% mastery, but that learner has not yet practiced this year, the, the, not this month, not this year, this month, then they will have zero questions there, but they will appear on this leaderboard as being number three because of the 72% uh, mastery that they have accumulated. So just to just keep in mind that the Atoms and questions appearing here are based off practicing only this month, but the mastery is considering the mastery that learners have accumulated throughout the whole year. Mm -hmm. yes. right. Thank you for that, Sisno Fondo. So uh, the most determine the most important determining factor here is the mastery and not the atoms and the questions. But mastery is made up of atoms and questions. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, thank you for that, Ms. Nomfundo. Um, and then now we will move on to creating now our own leaderboard. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. So moving on. Uh, how do we create our own leaderboards? And then why is this important? So um, uh, sometimes uh, you want to see who is that learner who has been doing so well at school and they have completed the most atoms, or you just want to know uh, out of all these learners who are uh, from my school here, who are putting my school to be number five, who is the most contributing learner? And then maybe you want to award them uh, or maybe are just creating a leaderboard for all your grade eight learners uh, if you are teaching multiple classes um, or you want to create a leaderboard for uh, all your your learners so how do we do that um, so what you do there uh, you will just come here where is my oh okay 
Okay, um, just a moment. Okay, so uh, what you would do now with the creation of leaderboards, you will just come to leaderboards here and then you will click on build my own leaderboard. So if you click on build my own leaderboard here, it will show you. Oh, oh, this is very important. Create separate leaderboards for each class. Uh, so this one will show uh, all the grade eight E one learners, and then all the grade eight E two learners, uh, like uh, leaderboard after leaderboard. But what we can do if we want to call, if we want to know who is the learner who has done most question. So what we can do now instead of doing that is combine all the selected class uh, classes on one leaderboard. So from there we combine them so that we can see. And then after that, we will just tick all the classes or all the grades that we are linked to. And then once we are done with that, then we can now build our own leaderboard. We can also adjust the times if you are looking for the last seven days the last 30 days, or you can even make your own selection and say, I just want from this morning until uh, 4 uh, p.m. So we can even do it for the whole year. And then from there, it will show you uh, the class that is contributing mostly to the uh, to the atoms is grade 12 mathematics class followed by grade 8 mathematics class and then after that if you scroll all the way down it will show you that okay uh, the learner who is actually doing so well is the the uh, is this learner here and then how many atoms they would have accumulated based on that so that's another thing that we can do and then remember leaderboards they can be used interchangeably you can use leaderboards to uh, reward learners or to just uh, appreciate them for their hard work and to also inspire competition amongst your learners so it would be nice if you are teaching all the create eight classes you just display these leaderboards that you have created on your own uh, and then also inspire learners to do better uh, and uh, go and work on more questions on Siavula. So that's how you can create the leaderboard. And then now I'm going to just quickly wrap up because I see we have uh, we don't have much time left uh, for this presentation there. So we have um, um, uh, talked about uh, leaderboards. So I'm just going to open this the floor now for questions for now if we have any. Questions? There is no hand at the moment, my guests are but teachers. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute or put your hand up. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, because I'm looking at time also. Um, in conclusion, uh, we have in incentivized activity for this week, which is all about checking the reports. So go ahead and check all the reports that we have on Siavula. And then also please do give us feedback on the campaign on um, what did you learn from the campaign? Uh, what did you benefit from this Teach to Rich campaign? And uh, just any feedback would be nice uh, to get from you. And then also I need to show you uh, our help center. So most of the questions that you would ask us, they are already answered here on Siavula. So if you uh, log on to your Siavula and then go all the way down here. You will see where it's written support. And then on support here, we have our help center. And then um, well, this is where now we have, you can type in how to register, uh, sign up learners. So if I type in sign up here, it will already pull out a sign up article on how a learner can sign up on Siavula. And then also if you are looking for uh, maybe a, um, assignment report, you can just type assignment performance will appear here and you can search it. And then also uh, what you can do with this help center here, you can just scroll down and look and browse according to the categories here uh, for Siavula learners, for you teachers, the tools that you have, our national leaderboards, teacher campaigns, which is what we are working on right now, and some resources that you can use uh, uh, in your class when you are teaching. 
so you can come here also to our help center for all the queries that you have but also um uh, if you are on siavula you will see there is where you can type in um the question there when you are on the profile oh uh, you can just uh, type uh, in the question and then you'll be able to, to be attended to um, here on the support. You can just contact us there and then um, our our team will get your question and then we will be able to respond to you within uh, like 24 hours and mostly it's sooner than that. All right. And then. Um, just in conclusion, um, our weekly prices will be announced on Friday on the 2nd of June uh, via WhatsApp and then share any feedback directly with your customer success lead or you can share it with anyone. And then we do have our social media platforms here, the WhatsApp line and then we have uh, Facebook, Twitter. Instagram and YouTube videos are also there. And with that, I thank you and I was right on time. And if you have questions, we are going to stay behind and be able to attend to you. All right, thank you.